This is a good one. Do you expect any more Tory MPs to defect to reform before the general election? Yes. How many? Oh. How many conversations I, are taking place with how I many don't different know. I'm Tories? just the honorary president, Camille. You, you know, I love this, Nigel. Uh, just, I know. mean, this is, it, it's a good game you're speaking, this whole thing that you're a journalist and not a campaign well, or a politician, I, and that you don't know what's no. going on at the heart of reform. I know that you know what's going on at the heart of reform, <laughs> because whenever I have to try and find out what reform is plotting, I phone Richard, and then Richard says, I think you better phone Nigel. No rubbish. OK? That's not true. You've got a... a a first-past-the-post electoral system that buttresses both sides. We don't have the ability, as British citizens, to have referendums on key issues, because if we did, the country would be very, very chamber. Um, but I do also think it's part of my reform. I, you know, I look at Switzerland, which is probably the most democratic country in the world, everywhere from Canton level, even to local level, up to state level. If the Swiss people want to call a legally binding referendum on an issue because they feel that their parliament's had a step with the country, they constitutionally can call that referendum and it is a legally binding result. I think if we had, um, I think if we had uh, that ability in this country, uh, we would never have seen a population increase of 10 million. Some question somehow would have been... Uh, uh, would have been. Um, and I also think the House of Lords has become a total abomination just stuffed full of party donors mm. over the course of the last 20 years, most of whom live within the same two postcodes in West London. I mean, they're even less representative of British society than the House of Commons is these so days. So you won't be expect accepting a peerage any time soon? No. I don't think you'll be offered one at the moment, to be fair. No, probably not. Should we no. have a referendum on immigration? Uh, what would the question be? Should we cap immigration at 100,000? And then, but then people will argue, well, it should be capped at zero. Or, or should we have net zero on immigration, as you've suggested, <coughs> yes yeah, or no? I, I, I think a referendum... I think I mean, a referendum that would be useful would be a referendum on the ECHR and whether we should continue to allow a court in Strasbourg to overrule mm. it. No, yeah, I think, Did uh, the Brexiteers miss a trick on that? No. Should that have deliberately, been... Deliberately. Yes, deliberately. To keep the left of, of the course, Tory party on side. Of course. Yeah. I urge them again and again include ECHR in this when yeah. it comes to the Brexit negotiation. Boris was never going to do that. Mm. No interest to him. I think if you have a referendum, the question must be very specific. That's why a referendum on immigration is so difficult to do. Um, but I think a referendum on ECHR, I'd love a referendum on the House of Lords, and that would be good sport, <laughs> wouldn't it? You know, should we replace it with a mostly elected... Let's well, end this on a positive yeah. note, then. This idea of uniting the right, let's just come back to that. Yeah. Conversations are obviously taking place with disaffected Tories, correct? I believe so, but I'm not involved with them myself at all because I'm the honorary president. I have no executive role of any kind at all within the party. That's what I've told Ofcom on behalf of GB News. And, <laughs> and, and coincidentally, it happens to be true, which is rather...